coming back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and here we are it's Sunday afternoon so we're making a start a little bit early this week so I thought I'd get a couple hours in on these canopies so let's make a start So here we are, we're back at the bench, and last week we touched on these fascia boards sticking the 0.5 card to the 1mm card. So now I'm adding the plastic strip and putting a piece along that edge and a piece just underneath the rim of this roof. Um, I was going to use quarter round, but I've decided to use the flat, the 10 by 40 thou flat strip and uh, yeah so that's what I'm doing here I'm using the contactor glue the professional contactor glue from Rebel now you're probably thinking oh that's not going to work but it, it does actually work because what it's doing it's melting the plastic strips onto the card and uh, yeah so it, it does work it does work on card and uh, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. So we're finishing off the fascias, and uh, hopefully, once that's done, we can paint the fascias up, and then we can start on the glazing. So I'm doing a few inches at a time. Just make sure it's flush with the edge, and it's sitting firmly on the card. You have a little bit of uh, time to play with this glue until it starts to melt. You can actually feel it sticking to the card already. It's already dried out back here where the glue was. So that's going to make an interesting um, look once it's painted. So, yeah, some interesting comments yet again. <laughs> yeah. um, Martin James reckons I am the silent master. Now that would be a great comic hero ca character. Um, can you imagine me fending off Dr. Death with a paintbrush and a scalpel <laughs> yeah so yeah I do enjoy the comments so yeah we'll just keep on going like this and then we'll see how far we get uh, as we go now we're working on the ends um, so this is the right hand side and basically what I've done is I've measured the drop that we have at the front which is 14 millimeters which is on that red dot there so that's 14 millimeters it's around the front so I've carried that across and I've put the template on that line there which is that line there which is the 14 millimeters and we have two mil at the back here that's for the the back support so if we put that on that line put that on the line and we should have roughly 10 millimeters underneath so we just slide the template forward to 10 millimeters 10 millimeters because that's roughly four millimeters that front piece and then we just hold that in place bear in mind we've got to have a millimeter at the front uh, because of the thickness of the card um, that's the actual fascia boards and the supporting card and then we just trim that piece out there to give us the front and then that becomes the template for cutting out the fascia boards for the sides so that's what we'll do now we'll cut that out 
taking the pencil line right off and then we'll see if it fits before we cut the fascia boards. So we'll just try that on the end. So as you can see I've, I've glued the uh, end fascia boards on and I've brought that 10 by 40 strip all the way around to the edge. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting in another strip from that corner along that edge there. I'm just running a bead of glue along there at the minute. Okay, that should be enough. And this is the strip. It's got a, as you can see, it's got a point on the end, which should, in theory, go right into that corner. The other way up. And then right to the edge. In there, like that. It's not easy trying to do this because I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> that with one hand while it's hanging over the bench and uh, trying to show you this little tiny part of the detail. Thing is, if that strip hasn't got it properly, then I've got some plastic weld which I'll just run along that edge and then that will seal it and then hold it in place. And what we'll do is another bead of plastic around that edge. And that will just finish that off quite nicely. Like so. Yeah, it's not quite got it. You can it's got the top, but it hasn't got it underneath, so I'll just run a little bit of this plastic weld along that edge. That should seal that in there. Don't matter if it makes the ink run because it's uh, it's it's going to be painted. So yeah. Now we move on to painting these faces. I am using a Humbrol satin white. Um, as you can see, with one little bit stuff done already, I think one coat will be enough. Um, the grooves of the paint are actually coming through, which is good. Um, which hopefully I'll be able to weather uh, further and the grooves will actually show themselves when I come to weather them. So it was well worth prescribing um, earlier. So yeah, so that's where we are. Hopefully we'll get this done quite quickly. Um, I'm doing the back um, sides of this card uh, in satin white as well. So, yeah, be interesting to see what this looks like when it's done. You can see tide marks there, which is left over from the plastic weld, and it's not coming through the paint, which is a good sign. Um, even if it did come through the paint, would uh, weather it and hopefully it will, it will show it up as tide marks of rain maybe um, but yeah but in the meantime we shall continue with this and uh, see what it looks like when it's finished so while I'm waiting for the paint to dry I've just added the lintel above these double doors and I've added a little touch of green um, paint here it's the same paint I used on the roof of the canopies and I'm just wiping it off now just to, to add that finishing touch now there's no canopy across this double door so I'd imagine this being exposed to the weathers 
there will be a little bit of green and grime and dirt above these certain areas. Now I've used paint there, but I'll probably use weathering powders to add some streaks coming down these walls just to finish it off. So I'm just using some powders now just to run along the top edges of these brickworks here. Basically it colours the card especially where I haven't painted it and then I'll just put a little bit over these stones just black powder and I'll use a little bit to run along that edge as you can see it's very very subtle and it just tones the brick paper down or brick paper card down and I'll just run along those edges too get a little bit on the path not on the top edges there not too much now where you would expect to find more is around the chimney pots and the chimney grits so plenty around there So basically what I'm doing, I'm just taking the shine off the satin coat of paint. That's the weathering finished. Um, I think, yeah, I think he can go over the top. So I'm just leaving it as that with a, a light dusting of black, which gets into the grooves of the stonework, like we have along that wall there, as you can see, and a light dusting around the chimney breast and chimney pots. Um, I think I'll add a little bit more to these window frames. Uh, I think that, that'll be about it. Yeah. I think that's the main building finished. Back to the canopies. Right, so the paint is dry and now it's time to fit these columns to the steelwork, as it were. Um, yeah, just making sure there's no paint there, so I'm just giving that a little scrape, just to be sure. So what I'm doing is I'm actually super gluing these on. And just making sure they're 90 degrees to the frame. And making sure there's no paint on the underside. And making sure the distance is set correctly. Um, 
33mm and 33mm. With the trusty square, just making sure that they're 90 degrees of that way and 90 degrees that way. Now that the columns are on, we can um, prep the back face ready for fitting to the wall. So what I'm doing here, I'm just putting on some PVA wood glue right along this back edge. And uh, this should hopefully secure itself to the lip on the station wall. Now we move on to the glazing. Um, we've got some packaging here which we've blue tacked to the bench and I'm using some plastic strips, uh, evergreen styrene strips and I'm just going to super glue them to uh, this glazing. Now you notice each one of those lines is going to represent a strip. So let's have a go at this. Now it's already cut to size so it's just a case of just lying this on there. And then once that's got a hold we'll just cut that off and then start again. It's as easy as that. Now the secret here is not to put too much super glue on the strip. You just want to gently rub it up and down the strip like so. Leave it for a few seconds and then place it on the glazing. And then just keep going on like that. Now, every once in a while I'm going to have to take me off the bench and check um, the distances of where the supports are on the canopy. Um, just to make sure that these are in the right place. Now that few seconds, just holding it before you place it on the glazing should stop any of the ghosting effect you get. Because super glue does dry out pretty quick. You could use glue and glaze, but I prefer to do it this way. Like I says, I'm only putting a really tiny amount on. Here we have our first section of glazing and uh, yeah it looks it looks quite neat. Um, by following the lines on the cutting mat gives you a good uh, 10 millimeter centers. Um, obviously where the supports are I've used 2mm plastic card 
and I've uh, had to keep going back to the canopy um, supports to make sure that it lines up with the 2mm card on the canopy. Um, as for ghosting, um, there's very little of it and if it does appear straight away use a little bit of thinners on a cotton bud stick and just rub it off and um, it seems to have cured it but uh, only when it first appears don't leave it overnight um, you, you'll not get rid of it you, only when it first appears so um, I think it's time to have a look at this on the canopy and see what um, well it looks like Well, the canopies are now glued to the walls, and which has straightened up the walls and the canopies. Um, so yeah, that, that has worked quite well. If I can get the camera low down enough, you can see right along there now. And the left hand side still needs a little bit of uh, weathering. I'll do that once the DMU is out the way. I'll just use a, a little bit of weathering powder, similar to what I've done here on the right hand side. So yeah, the uh, canopies are, are looking, well, quite smart as it were. I'm just glad that the walls have straightened themselves up with the canopies being glued to them. So yeah, the glazing has been placed Temporarily, it's not fixed, um, and the two mil strips have lined up quite well with the beams underneath. And uh, once that's glued in place, we'll be able to put uh, the frame all the way around uh, to finish it off. Plus, with a, a small um, thin piece, a plastic strip across the middle. So yeah, that will quite. Uh, yeah, that would, that would finish it off. There's a couple of glue marks on the roof um, where I've had to use super glue to um, really bond the canopy and the wall together because uh, there was quite a, a big gap, especially on this left-hand side wall. So yeah, there's a lot of finishing touches to do once all the glazing's in. And uh, that will be the station virtually finished, apart from one little detail, uh, which has got to go above the refreshments room. That little vent um, that was on uh, in the photographs uh, when we first started off, I'm going to put that just there on that roof. So, yeah. So I think that's all we've got time for this week. So we've we've done a fair bit. Um, we made a great start on the on the glazing, and that's worked out quite well. Um, using that rule as the width for the glazing as well. So yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and um, till next time, enjoy your model railways. Oh, before we go. We have a couple of train spotters. Alfie and Ralphie's here sitting on a wall up. Just another little detail. Take care everybody. Bye for now. See you next time. Bye.